Hey guys, Mr. Backwork here. In this video, we're going to look at graphing linear equations. Before we get into actually graphing things out, what we're going to look at is checking to see if a point is a solution to an equation. So we're given the point 3, 4, and we want to check to see if it's a solution to the equation 3x minus y equals 7. So what we're going to do with the ordered pair we're given is we're going to take the numbers and plug them in for the appropriate variable in our equation. And what we're hoping to see happen is have the left side match up with the right side of our equation. If that happens, then yes, the point is a solution. But if the left side and right side do not match up, then the point is not a solution. And I've color coded this to try to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. But we have to remember that the first number in the ordered pair is our x value. So we're going to plug that 3 in for the x. So we would get 3 times 3. And then the second number in the ordered pair is a y value. So we're going to plug that in for our y in the equation. So we have minus 4. Four, and we're hoping that equals 7. So when we take 3 times 3, well that's 9, and we've got this minus 4 there, and we're trying to see if that's equal to 7. Well 9 minus 4 is 5, and 5 definitely does not equal 7, so that means no, this point is not a solution. So here we've got the exact same equation, but I'm asking you to test out a different ordered pair this time. So now we've got the ordered pair 1, negative 4, and we're checking to see if that's a solution to our equation 3x minus y equals 7. So again, we have to remember that the first number in our ordered pair is an x value. So I'm going to plug that in for my x. So we would get 3 times 1 minus, now the second number in our ordered pair is a y value. So I'm plugging in negative 4 and we're checking to see if this is equal to seven. Now three times one is three. Now in here we're subtracting negative four and when you subtract the negative number, that's the same as adding a number. So I'm gonna turn that into a plus four and we're checking to see if that equals seven. Well three plus four is seven and we get matching sets of sevens on each side of our equation. So that means yes, the point one negative four is a solution. Now, as we're looking at graphing out an equation, the graph of an equation is the set of all of the points on our coordinate plane that represent all of the solutions of that equation. Now, there's going to be four steps that we use as we're graphing out a function. Step number one, we always want to solve our equation to get a y equals equation. We want to have y all by itself. Remember, we called that function form. Step number two, we're going to use that equation that has just been rearranged into that y equals form to create a table of values. From that table of values, we're going to create a bunch of ordered pairs or points. And step number three is that we're going to plot those points out on our coordinate grid. And then step number four, the last thing we do, we take all of those ordered pairs, points that we just plotted out on our grid and connect them with a nice straight line. So in this example, we're going to look at graphing out the function negative 2x plus y equals negative 3. And step number one said that we want to solve to get y alone in this equation. So in order to get rid of this negative 2x on the left-hand side, we're going to have to add 2x over to the right-hand side. So that's going to give me the equation y equals 2x minus 3. Now we said once we had our equation written in function form, we were going to create a table of values. And I'm going to make three columns in my table. There's going to be an x column on the far left-hand side. There's going to be a y column on the far right-hand side. And then in the middle, I'm going to put what's on the right-hand side of my equation. That's my 2x minus 3, and that's where I'm going to show my work to get from my x value to my y value. Now I'm going to use a couple specific x values in here, and I'm going to work from negative 2 all the way up to positive 2. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So what I need to do with those x values is plug them in to this 2x minus 3 in order to get a y value answer. So I'm plugging that number in for x. So I'm starting with the negative 2. So I would have 2 times negative 2 minus 3. Well, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And then if I subtract 3 more from that, I get negative 7. Now I'm going to take this and turn this into an ordered pair. So that's the point negative 2, negative 7. 
Now I'm going to move down to my next x value. So I'm supposed to plug in negative 1. So I would have 2 times negative 1 minus 3. Now 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And if I subtract 3 more from that, then I get negative 5. So that gives me the ordered pair or the point negative 1, negative 5. Then I'm going to plug in 0. So 2 times 0 minus 3. 2 times 0 is 0. Minus 3, we get negative 3. So that's the ordered pair 0, negative 3. When I plug in 1 for that x value, 2 times 1 minus 3. Well, 2 times 1 is 2. Minus 3 is negative 1. And then lastly, we have to plug in that x value of 2. So I'm going to go 2 times 2 minus 3. 2 times 2 is 4. Minus 3 is 1. So we have the ordered pairs 1, negative 1, and then 2, 1. Now what we're supposed to do with all of those ordered pairs that we just came up with is plot them out on our coordinate grid. So my first ordered pair is negative 2, negative 7. So that means from the origin, I'm supposed to go left 2 spaces and then down 7 spaces. Now my graph, I can really only go down to 6, so I'm going to go down a little bit further than that. So I'm going to say negative 2, negative 7 is about right here. Now for my next ordered pair, I've got negative 1, negative 5. So from the origin, I need to go left 1 and then down 5. My next ordered pair is 0, negative 3. So I don't go anywhere left or right, but I go down three spaces. My next ordered pair is one negative one. So I have to go to the right one space and then down one space. And then lastly, we've got the point two one. So from the origin, I'm going to the right two and up one. Now the last thing I need to do is connect my points with a nice straight line. Now when we draw our line, we're gonna put arrows on each end to show that our line would keep extending forever in each direction. Now what's actually happening in here is we plotted out five points, but those aren't the only five points that are on the line. When we talked about graphing out an equation, we said that the graph represents all of the solutions of the equation. So not only are these five points solutions to the equations, but every point along this line also represents a solution to this equation. And if we extend this up and to the right, those would all be solutions as well. And if we extended this line down and to the left, those would also represent solutions to this equation. In our next example here, we're going to graph out the function x plus 2y equals 8. Remember, the first thing we said we wanted to do was get our equation in function form, which means get a y equals equation by moving any extra stuff over to the other side. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract the x on both sides of this equation. So I would get 2y equals negative x plus 8. Now I still have this 2 in front of the y, so what I want to do there is divide everything in this equation by 2. So we're going to end up getting y equals negative x over 2, there's nothing in there to reduce down, plus 4. Now that we've got our equation written in y equals form, in function form, we're going to create a table. And just like we did on the last example, I'm going to create a three column table with my x on the far left hand side, my y on the far right hand side, and this right hand side of my equation in the middle column. So negative x over 2 plus 4. Now I'm going to use some different x values compared to what we used on the previous problem. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because as I look at my equation, what I see happening is we're taking this x value and dividing it by 2. Odd numbers aren't always nice to divide by 2, so I'm going to use even numbers because those will always divide nicely by 2. So instead of starting at negative 2, I'm actually going to start at negative 4 and then go to negative 2 and then 0 and then positive 2 and positive 4. So I'm being very strategic about the x values that I'm choosing because of that divided by 2 as part of my equation. Now we're going to take these x values and plug them in to get our y value answers. So the first thing we've got is plugging in that negative 4. Now be careful because there's already a negative in front of this x. So this is going to be the opposite of negative 4 divided by 2 plus 
4. Well, on top, we have a double negative happening. So that's going to turn into a positive value. So now we have 4 being divided by 2. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. And if I add 4 more to that, I end up getting 6 as that value. Now I'm going to plug in negative 2. So again, double negative happening on top. We've got a negative, but then we're also plugging in negative 2. We're dividing that by 2 and then adding 4. So again, double negative on top turns that positive. 2 divided by 2 is 1, plus 4 gives me 5. When we plug in 0, we're going to get negative 0 on top, divided by 2, plus 4. Well, negative 0 is really just the same as regular 0. And when you take 0 divided by 2, you get 0 and add 4 to that. We get 4 as our answer. Then I'm going to plug in 2, so we get a negative attached to that 2, divided by 2, plus 4. So this negative being attached to the 2 makes negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, plus 4 is 3. Then I'm going to plug in the 4. So I'm attaching that negative onto the 4, dividing by 2, and then adding 4. So we get negative 4 on top, divided by 2 is negative 2 plus 4 is 2. So I'm going to take all of this information now and turn it into ordered pairs. So we have the point negative 4, 6. We have the point negative 2, 5. Then we have the point 0, 4. Then we've got 2, 3. And lastly, we've got 4, 2. Now that I have all of these ordered pairs created, I'm going to plot them out on my grid. So the point negative 4, 6 means we're going to go left 4 spaces and then up six spaces, so I'm going to put my first dot there. Then we've got negative two, five, so from the origin left two, up five. Then we've got zero, four, so I'm not going anywhere left or right, but I am going up four spaces. Then we've got two, three, so from the origin to the right two spaces and up three spaces. And then lastly, we've got four, two, so to the right four spaces and up two spaces. Now I'm going to take all of these points and connect them with a nice straight line. And then the last thing I want to do is add arrows onto each end of my line to show that our line extends in both directions forever and ever. Now there are a couple of special lines that we could run into. We could have a perfectly horizontal line, so a flat line running from left to right. When that's happening, what that means about our equation is that we've got just y equals some number. So there's no x variable on the right hand side. So if we look at this picture down below as an example, having the equation y equals two would mean that we have a flat horizontal line through the y value of two. Now we could also have a straight up and down vertical line. That's an x equals a number equation. So this purple line in my picture is the graph of the equation x equals negative one. So that is a perfectly vertical line through the x value of negative one. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching.